Hello again and welcome everybody. Uh, once again, I want uh, confirmation from the technical team. Everything is okay? All right, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks. I can see already uh, a lot of people have already joined. We're still waiting for uh, a little bit more, but we will, we will start. Uh, my name is Jawad Saadi and I'm the founder of Tawasul. I'm extremely excited today to share with you uh, this uh, new product from Hexatronic, our partner in Sweden. It's called the InOne. Uh, the whole session is going to be about that. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to start talking about the InOne now. Let's move into the agenda. The agenda today, this is the introduction. We're going to share uh, a very short video after that. Uh, after we watch the video, I'm going to go through the presentation of the InOne. And uh, my colleague Amjad Sultan uh, will also share some design ideas and some uh, of the reference uh, projects that we have. I'm going to also speak about one of our reference projects called Isla, uh, where the InOne has been implemented, one of the projects where InOne has been implemented. And then we're going to have an open discussion, uh, a Q&A, and we're going to uh, try to answer all questions uh, as much as possible. Uh, at any time during the presentation, uh, please click on the questions and answers buttons in your uh, Zoom, whether you're on the browser or in the app, and post in your questions, and uh, the moderators will help me uh, sort through the questions and answer them uh, one by one. Um, this, the, uh, my presentation will take about 20 minutes, Amjad will take another 20-15 minutes, uh, and then we're going to have the Q&A, and that will last as long as we have uh, some questions. Uh, so let me introduce my colleagues, uh, Amjad Sultan, uh, joining us from Amman. Uh, good morning, Amjad. Good morning, Jawad. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, Amjad is the general manager of uh, Tawasul Projects, and he's the one that has been involved in the project, uh, all our projects during the sales process and the implementation process, and uh, he's going to be a good asset for us today to discuss about the InOne solution. Also, uh, from Hudiksvall, uh, it's the location uh, of the uh, in one factory, the Hexatronic uh, factory in Sweden. We have also uh, Carl Uwe Andersson. Carl Uwe is the product manager uh, of in one and he's been very much involved in the initial design of the in one and in the development uh, of the in one solution and uh, uh, I cannot think of anybody better to be with us today to answer the questions. So, uh, uh, good morning, Kar Uwe. Morning, morning, Jawad. Nice it, to be with you. Is it already spring in Hudiksvall? Yeah, it's starting up, but we are waiting for the heating. <laughs> our, yeah, hopefully some sun will come. Well, uh, if I look at our audience, uh, most of them are already enjoying the, the sun. So, uh, we'll, we'll send you some. Oh, nice. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hold on, gentlemen. I'm going to come back to you. All right. Uh, as mentioned, now we're going to show in uh, a minute and a half uh, video about the in one. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back uh, and start sharing the presentation. In today's traditional installation, separate cables are used for power and fiber. Hexatronic simplifies the installation with our groundbreaking in one hybrid system. Hexatronic in one reduces installation time, decreases the number of components, and allows you the opportunity to install it on existing ducts. Deploy in one by blowing one single cable assembly, which includes both fiber and power. The in one system includes hybrid ODF, power unit, termination box, and a hybrid cable. The in-one solution can be designed in any topology, whether it is a bus, a star, or a combination of both in a fan-out topology. We installed a surveillance system to our cable factory with the in-one system. The distance is 700 meters, with possible installation up to two kilometers. The in-one solution can be deployed for a diversity of applications, such as DOS, 
distributed antenna system, public Wi-Fi, IP surveillance cameras, 5G, IoT, and many more applications. Dawasol is a certified designer of the N1 hybrid solution and the regional distributor for Hexatronic in the Middle East region. Contact Tawasol so we can help you design your project or become a reseller. For more information about N1, visit us on www.tawasolnet.com slash hexatronic or email us on hexatronic at tawasolnet.com. How can Hexatronic N1 help you? All right, uh, so this was the video. Uh, this video and many others you can find on our homepage, tawasolnet.com. And if you go to YouTube and look for the channel Tawasol Tube, you'll also find this video uh, with different variations and uh, different uh, languages. All right, so I'm gonna start with the presentation now. Okay. Uh, let's speak a little bit about Tawasol. Many of our audience today uh, probably have not uh, worked uh, with us today. Uh, we have done uh, previous webinars or in one for all our partners in the Middle East and Africa. Uh, but this uh, specific segment, we have sent out invitations to people that are involved in uh, that are system, uh, that, that are CCTV system integrators. Uh, and um, so I would like to very briefly introduce Tawasol. Tawasol is a value-added distributor working throughout the Middle East and Africa. Uh, our uh, back office operations is in Amman. Uh, me personally, I'm based in Stockholm, Sweden, and our logistics operation is in Jabal Ali, Dubai. Tawasol is not a typical distributor. We only work with uh, few um, uh, vendors, uh, there are all world-leading vendors uh, in, in their industry. Hexatronic, which is the topic of today, I'm going to speak a little bit more. Uh, Mitel, which is uh, the world leader in uh, unified communication, and UCAS. Uh, also, Ericsson LG is, uh, I think, uh, very well known uh, to everybody. Um, so we don't work with a lot of vendors. We work with very few vendors. We work with the top vendors. And what we say about ourselves is that we're a value-added distributors because we're very much involved with our channels. We never go direct to our customers. We work always through our channels and we get involved through the design process, pre-sales process. And if you want to uh, learn more or you want to partner with Tawasol, please contact us. Uh, in the contact form or reply to any of the emails that you have received in the invitation of this uh, webinar. Okay, so let's talk about the in one. Uh, as the name implies, in one is that everything is in one. Everything you need for the infrastructure of uh, CCTV is in one uh, solution. But before that, Hexatronic is a uh, is a world leader actually and an innovation company. It's a Swedish company and manufactures most of their products in uh, Sweden. Uh, Hexatronic a few years back have taken all the fiber optic portfolio from uh, Ericsson and we had the partnership with Ericsson prior to Hexatronic uh, taking uh, over and when Hexatronic acquired the fiber optic factory from Ericsson, we also moved our partnership with Hexatronic and our business have actually flourished uh, since that time. Uh, their portfolio is big. It's not the topic of our uh, uh, webinar today. We're gonna focus about uh, one product, the in one. Uh, but if you're interested in fiber optic, in blown fiber, in uh, uh, nano cable, uh, we, uh, Hexatronic have a wide portfolio more than 20,000 items actually in their portfolio, contact us. Uh, extremely high quality uh, based on uh, Swedish quality standards and Swedish engineering. Before I go into the in one, uh, I think most of the people are uh, familiar with the air blown fiber systems. Uh, it's a technology where instead of putting traditional ducts, you put special small ducts they come in uh, they come on reels on long distances one kilometer maybe two kilometers depending on the uh, terrain and you can blow the fiber and this the blown fiber on itself is a huge saving on the civil work 
uh, in any project that we participated in, um, there was significant saving uh, with a blown fiber. And the N1 also uses both the traditional infrastructure or uh, the blown fiber. So I just wanted to mention it briefly so anybody that is not familiar with the blown fiber will know what I'm uh, referring to. So let's talk about the N1. The N1 basically uh, is a cable with, uh, it's a cable assembly that has copper cores and fiber cores in one cable. The cable has different dimensions. One of the examples is only six millimeters, which is extremely uh, small. Uh, and um, because of it's small, it's very easy to blow on long distances and it decreases uh, the installation uh, cost uh, significantly. But the N1 is not only the cable. The N1 is a complete system, end to end, from the power injection point to the hybrid ODF, to the distribution network, to the uh, devices. Uh, and the devices can be CCTV camera. The, the best, our best selling application is actually CCTV. We're gonna focus on that, but actually, in the end of the day, any IP device can be connected to the N1. The N1 is transparent to what's connected to it. Uh, it delivers power and fiber. You can convert that power and fiber to uh, PoE and then drive any IP device. But we're gonna talk about that. Let's talk about the building blocks of the N1. Let's start with the insertion point. So in a one or multi locations on your network. You can insert uh, the uh, start uh, the network by inserting power and fiber into the hybrid ODF. And I'm gonna show you detailed pictures of that. We have two variations of the power rectifiers. We have 48, uh, 480 volts, and uh, we have 1000, uh, 480 watts, sorry, excuse me, and 1000 watts depending on how much load you have. Then you connect the in one cable, the hybrid cable to this hybrid ODF. And you ca we have different variances of the cable and there is more to come in the roadmap. You can either have a 12 core or a 24 core uh, count and the copper uh, cables can be uh, 0.75 millimeters times four or 1.5 millimeters. Uh, the reason why we have four uh, copper cores uh, is to keep the cable assembly, we actually only need two, but to keep the cable assembly round, we put four. So it means when you use the 0.75, it's 0.75 times two. So effectively, uh, the diameter is 1.5 uh, millimeter square and double that for the other size uh, of the cable. Then we terminate the cable into the in one cabinet. It's, a, it's an access unit. And the access unit can deliver um, uh, direct DC, uh, I'll talk about that later, or we can put a switch inside uh, this cabinet. Uh, Hexatronic uses uh, different brand switches, couple of them, but it is not limited to that. The only limitation is actually uh, the, the physical dimensions uh, of the switch, but we use top brands uh, that we integrate with the solution and have been tested. Uh, we have used in our projects PoE Plus that can deliver 30 watts uh, power over Ethernet or PoE Plus Plus, which is 60 watt if you have larger cameras with P PTZ uh, and um, uh, infrared. Yeah. Uh, these cabinets, there is uh, two variations. There is the indoor uh, and the outdoor uh, variation. Now let's talk about uh, load examples. Um, so uh, we have uh, the switch itself uh, takes around uh, five watts. Uh, an I average IP camera will take about 18 watts. O of course, it differs from vendor to vendor and model to model. A PTZ camera is around 45 watts and PTZ with IR is around 60 watts. Uh, a public Wi-Fi access points take around 13 watts. Uh, an IoT device and IoT sensors will take a fraction of a watt, but I mean, we put two watts. So in reality, when we're talking that we have up to thousand watts 
the thousand watts can go very far uh, in 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 uh, supplying um, uh, power uh, to uh, devices. So if you're using standard uh, cameras, 18 watts, uh, there will be some loss uh, due to the distance. Uh, but in, in each uh, segment, we can supply many, many cameras on long distances, and we will speak about the distances a little bit later. Uh, let me show you a little bit more about the components. Uh, the, the device on the right is the hybrid ODF, we, uh, and the device on the left is the rectifier. So we input AC power on the rectifier from the uh, left side, and we output DC power. So this whole solution is supplying DC power. The standard that we are using is 110 volts DC, uh, and we can supply either variation 480. This picture is the model of the 480, and there is the other model with uh, 1,000 watts. So the output here, uh, where you see the DC output, you, we take the plus and minus and we enter it into this hybrid ODF. And then uh, we enter the fiber optics into a cassette from the right side here. You see the fiber optic uh, connections. And then we connect the output cable, the power and fiber cable, all right? Which, if, uh, uh, which, is, which gets connected to the hybrid ODF. So it combines both the DC voltage and the fiber optic cable. On the termination end, as you saw in the building blocks, then the in one cable will enter uh, the cabinet. Uh, I hope that you can see uh, the mouse. And now it's time that we separate the power from the fiber. So if you see the fiber is going to the fiber cassette on the left, and this folds down, and the power is going to the power connection boards. Uh, this is an older model of the power connection board. It has one input and two outputs. The newer ones uh, have one input and three outputs, but this is a physical connection, so it's not actually limited to that. But the power that we're dropping at this point will feed the board that is under it, and that's a voltage regulator. And let's say that we started with 110 volts DC. By the time we reached uh, this cabinet, uh, it's 105 volt DC. So we don't need all of that to feed our switch. So this is a voltage regulator that will output 48 volt DC regulated. And that is input, that is the input that feeds the PoE switch. The PoE switch is also, we take one fiber core and we connect it to the PoE switch, and then we take the PoE outputs. So depending on the model you select, you want a PoE plus or a PoE plus plus, and then you want a one port, a two port, a four port, an eight port, depending on, on your requirements. And on the right side of the switch, you connect your cameras or any uh, IP device. This cabinet is totally outdoor. We have installations in extremely harsh environments and extremely hot weathers, and we have not faced any problems uh, till now, at least. Uh, but uh, we do not anticipate any issue uh, with the fiber. The cabinet uh, is made out of aluminum, and it can be installed on poles, it can be installed on the wall, and actually it can be put inside a manhole. Uh, it is uh, ready uh, for that as well, if you have that need. This is a little bit about uh, the uh, design tool. Uh, it's actually a power calculation tool. Uh, anybody that wants to know more about this power calculation, we can have a separate session. Uh, to talk about the tool, but what you do actually, uh, we enter here uh, between each segment, the distance of the segment, and uh, at the point of the uh, node, the first node, let's say, or the first access point, we put the power consumption, and the tool will calculate how much voltage and how much power is left. 
So actually, what you do, whether you have a, a bus topology or a fan out topology, you just draw this. And th the beauty of, of the solution is that sometimes uh, two cameras are close to each other, but maybe that's not the best route because there is a street that you cannot uh, connect them to. Uh, so you can you can show that you, you you use the best route that is suitable for your network and then you come and you put all the distances that this is an 800 segment then there is a 300 segment after that there is a 700 segment you put all the distances so the tool will calculate the losses in the cable you put all your loads how many cameras is connected what's the load of each camera any other device that you have and uh, the tool will let you know when you have used up a power budget so the answer on how many devices i can connect or how long distances i can connect it's a power budget calculation and this easy to use tool will help you in the design and our um, pre-sales and engineering team will also help you with the design all right so let's make a comparison let's make a comparison between a traditional solution and the in-one solution. Uh, luckily uh, for this um, uh, uh, comparison, we have implemented two projects that are identical. Uh, identical in size, number of cameras, and both of them are uh, large compounds. The first one is in Riyadh with 2,000 uh, residential units, and the project was perimeter security. And the customer wanted us to connect uh, all the cameras on the perimeter and at that time uh, Hexatronic have not released uh, the in-one solution uh, so we have uh, implemented it uh, through the traditional way and uh, as you all uh, know uh, as uh, CCTV system integrators uh, you know this uh, topology uh, that you start you need to connect the AC power and uh, you start with the main panel for the AC power, and then you have to do some ducting and civil work and put in uh, AC cable. Then you have to put uh, sub panels, and from the sub panels, you will feed uh, the switches. Uh, and inside the the sub or inside the switch cabinets, uh, you need to have a, an a AC to DC uh, conversion because this is an AC distribution network. Uh, any of you that have distributed AC power uh, over long distances, you know how cumbersome, how, how expensive uh, that is. You need big cables, you need protection on the cables, you need outdoor uh, sub panels and inside the uh, switch cabinets, you need uh, AC to DC uh, converters. There is lots of regulatory issues as well uh, regarding that. You also need another network for the fiber optic cables. And the fiber optic cables, they will feed uh, the, the, the switches. Uh, sometimes uh, in, in the project that we implemented, some routes were common. Uh, other routes were uh, the, the power needed to go different route from the fiber because they are both uh, originated from different points. So there was uh, two civil networks, one for the fiber and one uh, for the uh, AC cables. And here you see the, the cabinets where we have the AC to DC converters and we have the switch. So each every time you have a switch, you need an AC to DC converter. All these need to be hardened. They need to be environmentally ready to be in an outdoor cabinet uh, and uh, to withhold uh, the heat uh, and uh, the environment of the uh, outdoor cabinet. All right. Now, uh, last year we implemented a very similar project, and this is the reason we picked this project in specific. Uh, we have uh, taken the consent of the customer to share uh, the information of uh, the design. Uh, the project is called Isla. It is based on the Red Sea, uh, which is a hot and humid environment. So it's a, it's a it's a very good test uh, of of the uh, solution. So let's apply the in-one design. And here in the insertion point, we have the rectifier, the one I showed earlier, uh, 
uh, in this project, we mostly use the 1,000 watt uh, rectifiers and then uh, the AC to DC converter and the fiber. And they're both joined at the hybrid ODF. The hybrid ODF, ODF is a passive device. It's a small uh, in size. Um, and then we were uh, running the cables. And uh, you can either use uh, traditional uh, ducting or the air-blown ducting. Uh, the air-blown ducting will provide you additional uh, saving. Uh, and that's a very good uh, option uh, to have. And then you connect to the cabinet uh, where you have the switch, the cabinet, the in-one cabinet that I showed before. So you split uh, the voltage and it enters the voltage regulator and feeds the switch. And the switch in it turns uh, feeds uh, CAT, uh, the CAT6 uh, cables with PoE plus or PoE plus plus. So it's a beautiful solution. You can already see uh, the difference between uh, the two uh, designs. So let's assume that this is the first uh, drop-off uh, point. I'm going to speak about the box on top, but let me connect another one. Uh, you can have uh, here uh, either a bus or a fan out and connect the next point and then the next point. So you continue with the power, uh, with the in-one uh, cable and you put more drop-off points on the route depending on the topology of the network. Uh, the box that is um, uh, on the top, it's an illustration. If you have devices, uh, there are some um, RF antennas that do not need uh, Ethernet. So you can actually uh, use this solution without uh, the, um, uh, the Ethernet switch. So you just have the power voltage regulator, you get the 48 volts DC out and you connect the fiber directly. In case that you have a camera, uh, that takes fiber directly. You don't need the switch in that case. You can take the power from the voltage regulator and feed it to your fiber camera and take one fiber core and connect it to your camera. So if that is your need, uh, this is an option uh, that we have. So let's make a comparison uh, between uh, the two solutions. The N1 is the one on top and the traditional solution is the one on bottom. So I think uh, all of you, uh, with the experience that you have, uh, you can see the big saving uh, that you have uh, with all of that. But let me highlight the items that you save. Everything that is highlighted in red, this you don't need uh, when you do the in one. You don't need all the AC cabling. You don't need all the sub uh, panels. Uh, you can use the same fiber infrastructure where in the traditional solution was uh, purely supplying the fiber. You use it uh, for the same, um, uh, the same infrastructure to supply the power fiber with the N1. So it's, it's a huge, huge uh, saving. Uh, I, I mean, our customer have uh, showed us their calculations after we won the tender and uh, their saving was in the factor of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, so it's uh, the, the saving is proven and we can help you uh, in the design uh, and we can show you the saving on your uh, projects. Uh, these are not uh, exaggerated numbers by any means. These are um, uh, very much uh, possible uh, numbers and uh, to a certain extent they are uh, uh, modest uh, 30 to 50 percent uh, saving if you calculate the total cost of the project uh, you cannot say what's the meter price per meter for traditional fiber and the in one uh, fiber you need to calculate uh, end to end uh, the total uh, project if you're not convinced these uh, two uh, cables they are scaled to size uh, this is the six millimeter uh, in one cable. And this is the one we used in Isla uh, on the Red Sea. Uh, and the other cable is the traditional uh, AC cable um, uh, that we used in our uh, Riyadh project. And um, if, if you don't want to follow the design, if you just look at how much copper are in these cables, you can see the amount of uh, huge saving uh, that uh, we can have. Uh, aesthetically also, 
uh, you can see uh, the the comparison the in one it's one cabinet uh, that is posted on the pole while in the traditional solution in the bottom half of the slide uh, you see that there are two networks, one for the fiber and one for the AC, with the AC sub panels and with the cabinet, it needs to be a little bit larger because you have to put the rectifier, the AC to DC uh, converter and uh, the industrial switch. Uh, in this case, we used uh, Cisco uh, industrial switches, which are uh, quite expensive uh, compared to the uh, switching switches that we are using uh, with the N1. But that is something that you decide depending on the class of management that you need uh, in the switch. There are different applications, uh, CCTV as we focused on, but uh, uh, the picture here in the middle is uh, uh, a radar uh, camera, speed uh, camera. Uh, this is for public, public Wi-Fi um, uh, cellular uh, network. Uh, the manhole is an example how you can install the N1 inside a manhole. Uh, this is an IoT application, the ones in the bottom. It's a smart uh, trash can and a smart uh, bus stop. Uh, so these are different applications, but the applications are unlimited. Uh, whether you want just fiber and DC power, we can supply that, or you want uh, PoE, uh, we can supply that. So uh, the applications are, so your, the part you do, so th this is our role. The, our role is extremely complementary to your role. We want, we don't work with CCTV. We, we're not a distributor to any CCTV cameras. You are, you are the system integrators of CCTV. Uh, in many cases, the customer will ask you for uh, a turnkey project. So the N1 is extremely complementary uh, to your solution uh, because uh, if you achieve big saving on the civil and power infrastructure, the total price of your turnkey project will be more competitive. You will be less than the competition that is putting civil. Even if you're, many of you are representing uh, top uh, brands, uh, of CCTV cameras, and they are, there could be quite uh, expensive compared to some of the uh, competition. This will make your total price lower than anybody else because you you produce lots of saving on the civil. So your turnkey project price will be extremely competitive. So it's it's a very good alliance between us and you as CCTV system integrators, us as the in one supplier along with Hexatronic. And uh, you do what you do best, which is the CCTV, and we do what we do best, which is uh, the N1 uh, solution. This is the other applications that I talked about. We're not going to focus about that today. Uh, it's called DAS, Distributed Antenna Systems, and uh, RF over fiber, where you don't need uh, an Ethernet switch, but you can still use the N1. So what's in the roadmap? Uh, in the roadmap, uh, this is not committed. Uh, yet, but it is a serious uh, roadmap. And if you have any questions in the Q&A sessions, you can put your questions directly to Kaluve. Uh, we have a larger diameter uh, copper uh, in the cable assembly, which means two things. We can have more uh, DC voltage and longer distances, which is uh, extremely uh, interesting. The other development is uh, up to 400 volt DC, which is over 110 volt DC. Uh, one thing to note, uh, the, re the European standard maximum for DC voltage, uh, uh, the safety standard is 110 volt DC. The American standard uh, is, I'm not sure if it's 50 or 55 uh, volts DC. So uh, there is a limitation with any uh, uh, similar products or competing products uh, to the in one if it's an American uh, because it is much less voltage so it means that uh, much less devices and much uh, shorter distances. Also the in one cabinet is going to uh, have a lock option so you can lock it. Uh, it it's going to have also some sensors temperature and tamp tamper sensors or any other ty type of sensor so you can connect it to your uh, monitoring system so you know any of the cabinets if it's been tampered with or if the temperature is exceeding uh, the limit uh, of your uh, devices. Uh, there is going to be also a tactical solution. I have a slide to talk about that. 
And there is a specific design for uh, 5G implementation. So any of you that is working with operators, that will be extremely interesting, but we can have a separate session uh, to talk about. Uh, this is a little bit about the tactical cable. Uh, these pictures are not from the N1. These are uh, pictures that we have just taken, just to give you an example uh, of uh, what's a tactical cable. So the whole N1 solution can be in a tactical variant, which means that you will have rigidized cables that you can put on top of the uh, ground. Uh, vehicles can drive over them. Uh, and whether it's for a military application or a non-military application, uh, Many customers have requested this product. They are civil uh, 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 entities uh, for big events that they want to install CCTV and public Wi-Fi network, and they want a temporary uh, uh, connections uh, to use the N1. A quick connect for the fiber, so there is no splicing. It's just a quick connect. You can put the cable in any way. You're not worried about the cable. You don't need any extra protection. So it's a uh, you have drums to unroll the cable fast and roll it back again. So uh, hopefully uh, this product will come soon and it will be available to you and we will keep you posted. But please uh, tell us uh, if you have an interest in this because your interest will help us uh, speed up uh, the process uh, of, uh, of the development. Now let's go to our reference project. Uh, the reference project is in Isla on the Red Sea, south of, of Jordan. Uh, the project is, is, is quite big. It's a multi-purpose development, 4.4 uh, million square meters. Uh, the perimeter wall is around uh, eight kilometers. And the security for this project is quite uh, special uh, because uh, the, where the mouse is pointing, all this wall is a border uh, with uh, uh, occupied uh, Palestine. Uh, so the uh, Israeli army is on the other side. So it's a very sensitive area. Uh, the north boundary is actually a power plant and the airport. And uh, the uh, east boundary is the city of Aqaba and the south boundary is the Gulf uh, of Aqaba. So two of these walls are extremely sensitive. So the solution had had very tough requirements that we have to meet. Uh, we had to meet and we have met uh, all uh, the requirements. This is a little bit uh, about the project. The project has uh, residential, it has um, different hotels, golf course, beach clubs, uh, commercial area. Uh, you can go to their website www.isla.com.jo uh, to look more uh, about the project. Uh, this is the uh, AutoCAD design. Uh, if we zoom in to any of this, you can see all the details, all the power routes. And we as Tawassal, we help you with this design. We do not do the, uh, the AutoCADs that you submit to the customer because that has lots of other details that is part of your project. But we can do the input, AutoCAD input for your final AutoCAD. Uh, that you can use uh, and if you have any questions about that and this is why we keep saying that we're not the traditional distributor we do design we do lots of uh, pre-sales work uh, uh, to uh, to help you with that uh, and this is we we produce after we do the design on the AutoCAD uh, we produce a single line diagram that shows you all the fiber cables and the in-one cable routes how it connects to the cabinets uh, the bus network, the fan out uh, star networks, how everything is connected and how each camera is connected. So this is this is the actual example of the design of Isla that we have got the permission to share with you uh, today. Uh, this is a picture. Uh, as you see, this is an extremely neat uh, installation. Uh, the poles is having uh, the cameras and the in one cabinet is on the pole. Uh, there is also an extra shelter that is not shown in this picture that was uh, introduced for this project uh, to decrease the direct sunshine uh, on the cabinet, but the cabinets have been performing extremely uh, well. So this was my presentation. Uh, give me a couple of seconds. I need to uh, set up uh, my colleague, uh, Amjad Sultan. He's going to uh, uh, 
uh, talk more about the uh, uh, design uh, elements uh, let me bring him in uh, Amjad you need to go in full screen please so I can bring you in go ahead Amjad okay uh, thank you Jawad uh, I can't see myself so I will speak directly to the camera um, uh, thank you Jawad for the presentation um, now I speak directly to the point uh, of this webinar actually I want to talk what is the benefit of in one in a CCTV project implementation which is most of the attendees now is working uh, in this segment um, as, as you know, and from your experience, I, I'm sure that you know that any CCT project ha usually has two networks. One for the IP connection, which is the fiber uh, network and switches and everything. It's a pure IP network. And the other network is for power because each location that you will install a uh, switch to feed the cameras, it needs power. So usually for any CCT project, you have these both networks and in your role usually you are uh, responsible for the IP network role but using the N1 why not having the power within the fiber cable that you already installing so just think about this sentence and you will know how big is the saving that you are eliminating all the need for the work all the ducts, all the civil work, everything related to the uh, power network needed in each single location that you will have the switches and the uh, feeding cabinets for the CCTV cameras. I will go uh, more and discuss some examples of some projects we did in Saudi Arabia and the project we did here in Jordan, just to show you what was the traditional design that I'm sure that most of you are familiar with, and how the N1, when we did the N1 design, how uh, much saving we did for the customer. So I will start directly. This is a traditional uh, design for a project we did in uh, Saudi Arabia. And it's straightforward as any CCTV project design I think you are familiar with. You have the data center where you have all the core switches and uh, equipments and NVR that will connect everything. Then from the data center, usually you go with a fiber cable to a cabinet or a street cabinet or a pole cabinet, whatever it is. It's an outdoor cabinet that hosts the switches that connects the cameras and provide POE to uh, the cameras. So in this cabinet, usually you have uh, you, you, you have to feed it with an AC power because the, this AC power will feed these switches. In this particular project, the cabinet, because it's very hot in Saudi Arabia, as you know, the cabinet was hosting an AC cooling just to maintain the temperature there and AC power source that it has separate network than this network it is a separate project separate routes separate everything separate cable as you know a ups for power redundancy because all these cabinets are distributed and they don't have one single power source for the ac so they needed to have a ups for redundancy and odf to terminate the fiber as you know then the switches that will connect all the cameras through cat6 so this is typically a design for any CCTV project. You have several routes, several cabinets distributed within the project. Then the uh, cameras are connected to these cabinets and these switches. So as you know, and here we are putting act the actual distance. So this is a 300 meter from the data center to the first cabinet. Then the first cabinet to the second cabinet is around 100 meter. Here is 200 meters, 1000 meter from the data center and the same for all of these cabinets. So this is a traditional cable, as I mentioned. And also, I want to mention something else here, that this is the design for the IP connection network. As you, as, as you see here, there's nothing 
say there's nothing said about how the AC power is connected. It's it's only said that it's, you need an AC power here. How it's provided? This is a separate network. You sure you know, and this is a separate work. And usually it's within another contractor actually in in, in some project. Now, from this design, the traditional one, we did uh, an, uh, another design using the N1 solution. And this is uh, exactly the same project, the same uh, devices here and here. This is block one, block two, and block three. And here, this is block one, block two, block three. What we did actually, Within the data center, because the data center already has AC power, so no need for any extra connections for AC or another uh, extra uh, power uh, network. So we put the rectifier, as Jawad mentioned, one of the components of N1 is that DC uh, power rectifier. We actually put the rectifier within the data center where we have a feeder from the AC power. Then from the data center all the way to the cabinets, we went with the hybrid cable. Because as you see here in the traditional, we will pull the fiber cable anyway. So this work will be done anyway. So by using the hybrid cable, we are pulling fiber and power within the same civil work, pulling material, everything. So we are saving really a lot in even in time and 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 uh, labor costs and everything so from here we are going uh, within a hybrid cable all the way to the cabinets and feeding them with dc power directly as Shawad mentioned mentioned uh, there are a power board uh, termination here we terminate fiber and power within the cabinet and provide regulated 48 volt to the switches inside the cabinets even from this cabinet, cabinet one to cabinet two, also it goes through the hybrid cable. So if you see, and the same for all the blocks. So if you see here, what we did actually, we saved on the customer the need of having AC power in each cabinet location. And I'm sure you know that this is a real big saving in any project. And I'm sure if you compare that at total project with a total project cost from any other vendor that will provide only uh, power and fiber separately, I'm 100% that the total project cost from your side or using N1 will be a lot of saving and will be very competitive. So another thing here, another saving, this is a side savings that because we are only needing AC power here in the data center. So if you need an UPS, you will have a centralized UPS within the data center. No need to have outdoor, uh, outdoor industrial UPSs distributed within all these cabinets and a lot of numbers of the cabinets. Another thing, if in, in, in very hot environment, you need ventilation and AC cooling within the cabinets, because you have a UPS and, and the AC power there. Using this one and only installation, installing the, the switches, the industrial switches within the cabinet, you also eliminate the need of any ventilation or cooling within the cabinet. So what we actually saved on the customer, we saved on M, all the connections, the power network that was should be built to provide all these cabinets with AC power. And this is a lot of saving, you know, and a lot of power cable that will be eliminated. Uh, and we uh, we cut the need of the AC cooling and the need of UPS. So this is this along of a side of the saving of the AC power network. Also, we reduced the number of elements needed within each cabinet. And we provided only the need we to have within these cabinets with all from uh, termination of the power and fiber. So this is briefly what we did.
Um, and I will go in more details about one project, another project we did in, in, uh, in Saudi Arabia with traditional, uh, with traditional cabling. Uh, maybe Jawad mentioned that within the presentation, we actually implemented a project for CTTV preliminary, uh, border for a project in, in, in uh, uh, Riyadh, in uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, using traditional uh, network. And I will not repeat it, but you know, this is, it will be a, a fiber ring, fiber going to each cabinet within the project. The cabinet will host industrial switch, and then we'll feed the cameras. And again, for per each cabinet, you need an AC power. And actually, this is what was implemented in the project. We, from our, our part, we implemented only the IP network. And there was another contractor that implemented the power network. So it was two separate projects and huge projects, both of them, to have one implementation, which is CCTV. So this is the uh, this is what the design for the IP network that we implemented, and this was the design for the power network that another contractor implemented. They had a main power source or generator or whatever. They have power cables, and it was really thick power cables because of the long distances that they should go through. And then they uh, had some distribution panels with circuit breakers. From these distribution panels, they have cables. They pulled cables to each single cabinet that we uh, used to, to install our switches in. And in each single cabinet, also, they installed an AC to DC uh, rectifier, so to convert the power from AC to DC. So just notice how much more elements are used within traditional uh, design rather than using the N1. All these elements related to the power, we, ex we, we, we eliminate uh, completely. No need for anything of this completely. This is the design, combined the design for both. The red ones are the fiber cable and the yellow, uh, the blue ones are for the power. So as you see here, again, it's uh, normally the same for any project. You have one fiber network or one IP network for the IP connection and another network for the power. And this is typically for any CCTV project, uh, similar projects. These are actual pictures from the project that was implemented. This is the power panel, the distribution power panel that has uh, circuit breakers. These ducts actually, the PVZ ducts, are the one for the fiber, and the galvanized ones are the one for the power. So as you see here, there are real two separate networks, two separate contractors, two separate civil works, two separate ducting, two separate material, everything. It's the pure two separate networks. Within N1, you have all of these within one single network, one single ducting, one single implementation and civil work. These are uh, also more pictures from the actual project. As Jawad mentioned, this is the cabinet uh, that we used uh, for the traditional network. This is the AC to DC rectifier that you should have within each cabinet. Also, you have a fiber termination uh, box to terminate the fiber, and you have to terminate the actual power that feeding the cabinet to a uh, socket or, or whatever industrial socket here, then you will host the switch that power uh, that give POE and connection to the cameras. So this is, I think this is a typical installation. Most of you know that and uh, implemented uh, something similar. Now, the same project, okay, that was implemented traditionally, we had a sim very similar one here in Jordan. That was that one was in Saudi Arabia. Uh, we implemented similar one, the same project uh, exactly. Also cameras for the security perimeter of the project. Maybe Jawad also mentioned that. Uh, 
in the presentation called Isla Oasis in Aqaba here in Jordan. Also, it's very humid and hot. Where we implemented the N1, uh, we implemented the project completely using the N1. The difference was that in the Saudi Arabia project, we only implemented the IP network. So we pulled the fiber, we terminate the fiber, we connect the switches, we did everything, but it was only provided, providing IP connectivity. In Isla, we did exactly the same. We pulled the fiber, we terminate the fiber, we connect the switches, but along with that, we also connected all the power needed for all these cabinets and switches within the same civil work that we did. It was a very simple process uh, to do that. All what we needed to do is having a rectifier in some location where AC power is available. Then from that location, we went to the cabinet, to the first cabinet, let's say, feeding power to that cabinet. Then from the other, the, that, this cabinet to the next cabinet, and that's it. So as you see here from uh, the, the AC power source needed only in one location or several locations. I will discuss this more in the design. But after that, you only have to pull only fire, uh, fiber cable that also ca carry the power uh, needed for uh, to feed all these cabinets. So no need for any. AC to DC rectifier here, no need to have any UPSs, ventilation, AC power source, anything. It's only fiber cable with power, the hybrid cable, the N1 cable, all, uh, all the way from uh, first cabinet to the next cabinet, and that's it. This is the design, Jawad mentioned it uh, briefly. Um, these orange, uh, let's say, boxes, are the locations where AC power uh, was provided and we put rectifiers here. So uh, we spread the, the project into uh, 16 zones and we have nine AC power sources within the whole project. While in their traditional design, they needed 57 locations because they had 57 cabinets, 57 locations to provide AC power too. And it was a real big project for them. When we came and said that we can do that with only nine locations of AC power source, they, they were really surprised. And we explained the, the project, the, the solution for them, and they were convinced to go with this uh, design and um, it's implemented now and working since six, seven months now, and uh, alhamdulillah, we had nothing, uh, no faults at all or no issues. So in this design, as I mentioned, we distributed the rectifiers in nine locations, and each rectifier was serving several uh, zones. Um, the distances here, actually, it's actual distances. So it's just an example here. Uh, the rectifier number eight, that uh, connecting one, two, three, four, five, six cabinets. Actually, the total distance between the rectifier location and the last camera or the last cabinet, actually, it's around 1,000 meters. So you see that we can really reach, and this is, this is real life, this is a real project, this is a real example. It's not, uh, 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 let's say a test or or uh, or something. No, it's really implemented. So as you see that we can really reach long distances, serving a lot of cabinets because each one of these cabinets actually have only one camera. That's why we could you, uh, reach this 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 distance. But I will speak more about that. But in total, you see that you can reach around 1,000 meter while you are serving in the in the road six cameras, six different cameras. Each one is 200 meters away from the other one. So just see how you, how, how much you are saving here in power and, uh, and civil work uh, to, do the, to do this in a traditional uh, way. 
this is the design, the AutoCAD design. I, I think Jawad uh, mentioned that. It shows the roots of the fiber or the hybrid cable, where are the cabinets, where are the DC rectifiers were located. And as mentioned, uh, we can help you with all of this. We can give you all the inputs. We can do all power calculation needed. We can help you with the uh, distribution of uh, the uh, rectifiers, distribution of the cabinets, uh, uh, everything, everything you need to have a full design, we can help you with, and we can discuss the savings, we can do for you a comparison between uh, the traditional design and the in-one design uh, with the inputs about the saving that you can discuss with the customer. We can, we can uh, basically we can really help you a lot in any project you have uh, to convince your customers. These are actual uh, pictures from Isla projects, and these are the N1 uh, cabinets that we used. Uh, it was hung on a pole, but it, you also you can hang it on, on, on a wall or and or placed even in inside a, a manhole if if needed. Uh, the cabinet, uh, as Jawad mentioned, has everything you need, so you don't have to look at any. Uh, components from local market or combine them together. Here you have the fiber cassette, the power board termination, the, the, the AC to D, the, the DC re regulator to convert uh, the DC power you have, the voltage to 48 uh, DC, the switch that you will have, the inlets, everything. And it's IP rated, so it's outdoor, it's aluminum, um, it's very rigid, so all the components you need, it's within one assembly, one installation from one vendor, so uh, so you don't have to do anything uh, to combine from the local market. Maybe you, you will bring the switch, but that's it. Everything else, you have it here. So these, uh, this, this is what I wanted to discuss with you. Uh, I just want to emphasize that. From your experience, I, I, I'm sure that you know um, that having two networks and implementing, implementing two networks, one for power, one for IP connectivity, is uh, actually uh, costly and time, uh, time consuming. And it needs a lot of cooperation or to coordination between these two uh, contractors. And most of the time, it's um, let's say more headache to the customer, the owner of the project, to have two contractors working to do something that eventually will be one implementation with it, which is a CCTV network. Why? If you offer N1 solution, you will offer him that, okay, I will give you the IP connectivity that you need, which is my part, but in addition to this part, I will also provide you with the power uh, the power that needed to feed all these devices and switches in one simple installation and the same civil work that I will did. So just imagine how much saving you will cause and how much competitive you will be among other competitors. Thank you very so much, Amjad. You're welcome, Joel. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's very good to hear from uh, uh, real experience and people that have uh, felt uh, worked directly uh, with the customers. Amjad, before we, the, before we go to the Q&A, I see that we have some uh, questions uh, coming in and join Carl Uwe. Uh, I remember during the bidding project uh, for Isla and also on other projects, uh, there was the concern of uh, this is a new technology, I don't want to risk uh, going yeah. into a new technology uh, so uh, how uh, how did you address that with the customers and what was the reaction no i was speaking to amjad but uh, i don't uh, see him uh, his picture is uh, frozen uh, right now uh, but uh, maybe we can take it uh, with you, Carl Uwe, please. Uh, yeah. How would you uh, answer that this is a new technology and uh, 
uh, since it's a new technology, it might not be dependable. Okay, uh, the technology we have uh, reused in, in this case is mainly from the train industrial uh, experience. So we have used material and components from that the region. So we, we know it's, it's very robust and uh, that's why we have selected components from that. And uh, that's why we think this is really reliable also. Yeah. Uh, so the fiber is the same fiber. So the fiber cores is not different. Yeah, exactly. The same. And uh, the copper is uh, is uh, I mean is uh, uh, it's it's same copper that is used in DC systems. Same rectifiers. So actually, the 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 implementation and the packaging idea is probably new. Uh, but uh, the, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not a risky technology at all. Uh, Amjad is back. Th welcome, Amjad. Mm -hmm. So, Amjad, uh, uh, to go back to the same question, do you hear me now? It doesn't seem that Amjad can hear me. Okay. All right, let's go to the Q&A. First question, what is the type of fiber, single mode yeah. or multi-mode? We have chosen single mode. But oh. of course, it could also implement multi-mode. But nowadays, it's mostly single mode that we have seen. Okay. So uh, the, the standard product is supplied with the single mode today. If there is a need for multi-mode uh, and it's in significant quantities, is that an option that you can supply that? Yes, of course it is manual. Then it's depending on the volume, of course, and lead times. Then, yeah. All right. Let's go to the next question. Uh, uh, what is the maximum cable length that we can use? The length is depending really then on the power load, but uh, as uh, Amjad has discussed uh, on show before is uh, about a kilometer is the reach and even more if you have a low load. Yes. So with the, uh, what kind of a load that you can reach the uh, kilometer? It's about 200 watts. 200 one. watts. So if you have, um, I mean, a couple of cameras with uh, less than that, it can go m more. Yes, of course, and even I think the most uh, situation we have seen is a daisy chain mm. that you have cameras along the way, and then you need to calculate it. All right. Mm. Okay, very good. But ca can you speak a little bit more about the power budget concept in the design? Uh, the power budget is uh, is mainly you need to calculate the power loss you have for for each drop. And then you see the power load, and that's why we also done an, an Excel sheet with some program behind it, so you could calculate it yourself and see how much uh, power budget you have, and put it in there. And then you see also the cable selection. What you have, there's two options of that: mm. a smaller and a bigger one. And then you can see the budget of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can see that the two questions that we had, there is some repetition in that. So uh, what is the... Okay. Uh, a new question. Uh, does the cable include an earthing cable or we will use another cable for earthing? The, this system is really, the uh, what I could say, is floating from ground. So there is no need for safety earth wire as in traditional AC powered. So it's, uh, it's floating from ground, but for safety, we have recommended that there is some uh, earthing at each point since uh, the CAT6 cable could also be electrified in some accident. So it's, it's good to have an earthing there. But from the in-one system, it's not really needed. So the N1 cable does not need any earthing, but the cabinet is supplied with an earthing port that they can earth. Yeah, since it's metal, I think it's it's uh, it's more safe to also earth it, as it could be electrified by other things around it. So I think it's it's best to have that earth it. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
Uh, next question, what is the fiber options that are supported, single mode or multi-mode? We answered that, but the second part of the question, and the maximum fiber cores, what is the maximum fiber cores? Oh, I would say it's 24, I would say. 24 cores. Yeah. All right. And that is sufficient. I mean, in, in uh, uh, Amjad, are you back with us? Do you hear me? No, Amjad is not back. But I know from Amjad that we have, uh, in all the projects that we have designed so far, we have never uh, reached the, a situation that we need uh, more than that. Uh, is that uh, fair to say, Carl Uwe, from your perspective? Yeah, we haven't seen it either. And of course, we, we could put in more fiber for a certain application also, if we were with another fiber type or like that. So yeah. We haven't seen the, re the requirement. Here. Yeah, w one thing I can mention that uh, from our long, long experience with Hexatronic, Hexatronic is extremely responsive uh, to the market and to the customer demand. Uh, there are many changes to the product that is already happening now uh, because of uh, our customer uh, demands and they are implementing that. Um, the, 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 the facility, the factory that they have in Hudiksvall is extremely flexible. Uh, so it, it, but this is of course a volume issue. If you have a larger project, I think the likelihood of adapting uh, to your requirements if all the standard products that we have do not meet your requirements uh, is, is something that is uh, possible. Okay, the next question, design implementation, is it covered by Tawasul? Uh, design is yes. Uh, Tawasul will do the full design. It will do the AutoCAD input that you can use for your final AutoCAD uh, drawings. We do the... Uh, single line diagrams, we do the bill of material and pricing this. So the total design is done by Tawasul. Implementation, no. Implementation is done uh, local. Implementation needs to be done by you or by a subcontractor that you supervise. We can provide you with implementation supervision if that is needed, uh, depending on the size of the project. But uh, from our experience, uh, implementation has to be local. Um, following the local code and local uh, Im uh, implement uh, i mean practices uh, but if you need implementation supervision it is something that we can discuss and uh, we can probably get involved in we have done that uh, in the past all right next question uh, what about power redundancy a good one uh, does it need another route or it is in the same cable Okay, in the same cable, of course, uh, the cable it what was it is. But I could say, as uh, I think a ring structure would solve the problem easily. So having a ring structure to feed it from both ends, that's uh, I think the best idea. Yes. So if if there is any power failure and uh, if there is any cut in the cable or a power failure in one of the source uh, the, the, you achieve redundancy by the other side of the ring yeah that's yeah good. and uh, the ring does not mean that um, you necessarily need to have a bus uh, topology it only needs that each cabinet have to be reached uh, from two different sources correct yeah that's correct all right uh, next question, uh, can you please uh, send us some recommendations for such industrial switches? Uh, absolutely, yes. Um, I mean, send us your contact details. We can uh, uh, share that uh, with you. Uh, Hexatronic supplies an end-to-end -end solution. Uh, they're using third-party uh, uh, industrial switches from Comnet. We have used them, and uh, even in some of the tenders that we're currently participating in, it was specified. Uh, so Comnet is vastly used as an industrial uh, switch, but we can share that with you. Uh, please share with us uh, your uh, contact information. You can either uh, fill up the contact form that is on our website or just answer uh, to the email invitations that uh, you received. Let's see the next one. Um, I'm very happy uh, that we have amazing attendance uh, today from so many different countries. 
I cannot count the countries, but uh, from the registrations, I see that we had many countries uh, participating. And from the attendance list, we have huge attendance. So thanks a lot uh, for the turnout. It's, it's the third time we run uh, the In One uh, webinar uh, in the past a few weeks and all of them had amazing attendance so th thank you so much for giving you the time giving us your time uh, the next question it is obvious that the saving ratio is greater in case of greenfield but how is it like in case of existing power infrastructure would there be any saving by probably utilizing the existing power infrastructure of part of it with the sort fiber optic connectivity so the, the question in brief, uh, Carl Uwe, that uh, the, the, the person that is asking, he say it's very obvious the big saving ratio in greenfield projects. But what about if there is a project with existing power? Uh, how would the solution apply? Okay, yeah. Uh, I could think about one thing. That's about uh, the UPSs that you have locally. That is rather costly to have them uh, uh, running and, and also service about them. So if you remove this and uh, replace it with this in-one system, you could save the costing of that. Absolutely. That's that, that's, that's that's a very good point. Uh, we have so a what, customer. Can you hear me or no? No, I can hear you now. Are you back? Thank okay. you. Can you hear us? Okay. <laughs> Did you want to comment on that? Um, yeah, actually, I want to comment on that. Uh, one saving that is possible, even if you have some power distributed within the project, because I will give an example. If you have a project with around 50 uh, cabinets distributed all over the project where you will host uh, industrial switches, you need AC power to each one of these 50 cabinets. Now, Using N1, you can, uh, even you, if you have power on all these systems, but using N1 actually, you can have uh, only a third step. Then from the fact that cabinet, you can serve several cabinets without the need of using the AC power or having any AC power there. It, it, it will eliminate the need of AC to DC in each cabinet, maybe a UPS in each cabinet. Also, you will have some centralized location where you will have a centralized UPS at the first cabinet. Then after that, all the cabinets will be served by the hybrid cable. So even if you have power, if you if you use it in one location, it, it will be some saving. But for sure, um, eliminating the, the power completely, it will be the big saving. Yeah, and uh, as you know, Amjad, uh, many of our projects, it wasn't the lack of power that uh, drove them uh, to in one. Uh, there is uh, two, two other reasons. One of them is probably there is a power outside, but it's not in the exact location where you want to put the cameras. So you can have uh, small segments of different in one solutions uh, that can be uh, put on that because... Uh, uh, you don't have a socket. I mean, you locate the cameras where it sees best. It's not necessarily that specific point has the power, even though uh, you have, for example, power on the perimeter uh, wall. But the main other reason, right. and um, without mentioning specifics about projects, but with security uh, agencies and security concerns, uh, for example, if you want to put street cameras for security surveillance, and you have power because every every uh, light pole has power. But do you want to connect the security camera on the municipality power pole? So if they turn off the lights, they turn off your cameras. I mean, it, there is a security issue with the cameras, specifically with the cameras. So, I mean, uh, yes, of course, if there is no power, eyes closed, this is the ultimate solution. There is absolutely no question about that. But even if there is power... In many, many cases, you don't want to use the power. One, because it might not be in the right location. Two, is because you don't want to rely on the supplier of that power. Who has access to every circuit breaker? Who can turn it off? Who can turn it on? Could the short, because of uh, the light or any other reason, affect your network? There are many, many reasons why, even if you have distributed power where you want to install the cameras, we have a project where they wanted uh, to install the cameras 
uh, not inside the building, but I mean on the sides of the building. And power is all over the place. They could, I mean, go in the building anywhere, but they didn't want that. They wanted something that is totally independent on a UPS, protected power and protected data connectivity with redundancy. So um, think about it in this way, depending on what's the customer requirement and share with us. Uh, the customer needs, uh, we can share with you our experience from different projects on how this uh, can apply. Uh, let me go to the next question. And now we uh, have to give few to Amjad because we loaded Carl Uwe before he got back online. Uh, in a bus topology, uh, what will happen if one of the cabinets become faulty? Amjad, you want to take that? Okay. <laughs> let let me let me answer this. Uh, in a bus topology, if you have a bus topology, uh, the cabinet after the cut <clears throat> will be affected. Anything before that will not be affected, and this this will be the the uh, the same for. But, but even I, the I will argue well. with you a little bit, Amjad. Uh, and Carl Uwe, I see him smiling. I think he has the same uh, point. Uh, if there is fault in the cabinet, the power for the next cabinet in the bus topology is not taken from the cabinet. It's taken directly from the cable. So the route, okay. the route <clears throat> does not affect it. Do you agree with that? Carl Uwe, you want to comment on that? Yeah, the, the the power is of course is is going to the next cabinet, but I think the question is related to the power of the local switch that is then busing it further on. So you need to have that active and, and going. Yeah. So if the local switch is failing, if I point that, yes, could be a concern. So that's why you sometimes want to have a star network instead of a bus network. So that's it. Typology, uh, right. So to, to, to conclude uh, both uh, answers, uh, the, the, the ultimate solution is to have uh, a ring and ring. have uh, redundancy. But it depends what is the fault because the, the question does not specify what is uh, the fault. If the fault mm -hmm. is in the switch of the cabinet, then only that cabinet is affected and the rest of the bus is not affected. If there is... Yes. If the cut is in the cable, then the other cabinets will not work if there is no, no redundancy uh, after that cabinet. So if it's cabinet number five, then cabinet six and seven will not work if there is cut uh, in the cable. Uh, and uh, if, if, if you have something more specific, please post your question again or uh, contact us and we... we, we uh, we can uh, supply, uh, we can return to you with a, with a more specific answer. Uh, next question, what is the device that would give us PoE++ for 60 watts, Carl Uwe? Uh, that you have used in your project is from Comnet, that switches with that. It was a four port, I think, that we put in that in the cabinets. Yes, we, we use a Comnet uh, switch that supplies PoE++ and it is supplying uh, in that project access cameras uh, that are uh, PTZ and IR. Uh, does it, uh, is it that, is that correct, Amjad? Yes, correct. Do, do you remember by the any PTZ chance the camera a, model? It has a number? heating uh, feature that it has... needs 60 watts to be activated. Ah. So we use uh, PoE++ switches that can provide PoE uh, 60 watt over the PoE port. Yeah, okay, and that, that is uh, working. So if you want the specific model, uh, we can, uh, we we can, can share, share that it, yeah. with you. Is the power calculation tool available to clients? Yes. Yeah, it can be available to clients mm. and they can use it. We can uh, train them how to use it. Yeah. But usually we prefer to recheck uh, the calculation before any uh, Thing, uh, real conclude just to make sure that everything is fine but for sure yes they have access to it yeah i mean when uh, i mean uh, the tool is available to give if you're interested to partner up with tawassal contact us uh, we'll share the tool with you we do two things uh, one thing is that we give you brief training online uh, on how to use the tool and uh, a little bit of 
uh, tips and tricks uh, on on uh, using it uh, and the saf safety margins that you need uh, to put uh, while designing. But also, before we produce um, uh, a bill of material, uh, and uh, we, we, we go through a verification uh, process uh, to do that. Amjad, do you have any distributors in Saudi Arabia? Um, actually, we are the distributor for yes. Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. um, we usually have local partners uh, mm -hmm. to work with within the country. Um, right now, we, we don't have any local uh, distributor in Saudi Arabia. So if if you are interested, yeah. please contact. Tawasul is the distributor. Tawasul does not work in projects directly. We have people in Saudi yeah. Arabia. One of our uh, design engineers is actually based in Riyadh. Uh, so he can help you uh, if you're in Saudi Arabia. He can help you uh, engineer Musa. He can help you with the, uh, with the design uh, there. Uh, so we are the distributor, and uh, if you are, if you have any CCTV project, we can uh, help you with that. Uh, as we never work with customers uh, directly. Uh, I have two more questions. How secure is the fiber when pulling outside without proper proper routing on surface? How how secure is the fiber, Amjad? I mean, do you put do you put the fiber cable exposed or you put it inside ducts? No, actually, this fiber is is for duct installation. So the protection of the fiber will be within the duct itself. Either it's exposed or underground, but it's inside duct. Um, I'm not sure if if this is the the question, but but yeah, usually we pull it inside the ducts. Yeah. I mean, in uh, but uh, I mean bet between the duct and the cabinet. I mean, uh, some exposure to the elements that is okay, isn't that correct, Kalove? Yeah, of course. Close to the cabinet, you need to avoid the duct. But to, to make it, uh, I think it's good to, to make it protected for for people who always want to damage it. So you have some yeah. kind. Of Mechanical protection. Yeah. yeah, just just to be clear, this is not a direct burial cable. <laughs> this yeah. is this is a cable that yeah. needs to be inside ducts. If you use hexatronic uh, micro duct, then you can blow it with air compressors. Uh, what's the maximum distance that you have tested, Kaluve? Oh, actually, it's about one kilometer. Or it's depending on how many cars you have in the installation. Yeah. About, about one kilometer without any handhole, any manhole. Imagine what that means. Uh, anybody that has uh, experience with um, uh, fiber deployment knows how much does it cost to put a handhole or a manhole. So to do 1,000 or 800 meters without a handhole or a manhole. And uh, again, the, the, the uh, blowing distance is dependent on the terrain. Uh, are you pushing the cable with uh, blowing the cable from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill or the opposite? Uh, is gravity helping you or working against you? Do you have so many bends and how tight are the bends? Uh, these are parameters. So in our actual experience, we have seen distances that is more than that and we have seen distances that is uh, less than that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can blow it also in a non-hexatronic uh, duct, but from our experience, uh, the, the match of the cable and the duct performs the best uh, blowing distances. Uh, some of our customers used another ducts. Uh, in many times it worked okay, but in some cases it was not blowing uh, the distances that they were hoping uh, for that. What is the reason for that, uh, Carl Uwe? What's special about your ducts? Ducts are ducts, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we have some special treatment inside the ducts that uh, I want to keep it uh, for ourselves. But oh, it's, so it's the secret uh, recipe. It's helping a lot. <laughs> okay, all right. That is good. So not every duct is a duct because there is the crush resistance and there is the 
bending characteristics and there is the treatment of the internal surface uh, uh, that that is that has the friction with the cable and actually it is uh, the sizing ratio uh, compared to the cable so there must be a match you cannot have a cable very tight inside the duct then nothing will push it okay and last but not least we have the last question unless more questions come uh, are you really eliminating network switches, Amjad? He's asking, are you eliminating network, network switches? switches? Mm, no, for sure. Network, if, if you mean the IP network switches, uh, no. Uh, we are actually using IP network switches. We are using core switches for connection. Anything you use for IP con connectivity is still there. What we are eliminating uh, is the switches or the circuit breakers needed for the AC power network. Uh, nothing related to the IP network. Yeah. So, so in, in reality, Amjad, switches, in reality, yeah. Amjad, we're relocating where the switches are. So if you remember yes. uh, the project that uh, you were last uh, discussing, uh, they had 19-inch uh, rack switches inside street cabinets with very big uh, air conditioning and very big UPS uh, systems. So those are eliminated, but they are not totally yeah. eliminated. They are being replaced by the comnet switches that is inside the N1 cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, in the core network, you need fiber switches uh, where we, you're supplying the fiber depending on the size uh, of your network, of course. So if you want to say, are you eliminating number of IP ports? The answer is no. But are you eliminating this big 19-inch switches that you might need to put in an outdoor environment? The answer is yes. We are relocating yeah. the, the switches. We are putting them closer to the cameras so they are the, within the reach of the POE. They are within the reach of the 100 yards. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, they are industrial, so they do not need any special uh, cooling. Uh, yeah. Do you want to add anything, Amjad or Kaluve? Yeah, I would. No, no, that's good. Thing. With, with shorter CAT6 cables, I think you could avoid also some disturbance that you have for, for long distance CAT6 cable in a in an environment that is electrical uh, disturbing it could be some absolutely so i think it, that's the whole idea with this in one to, to place the switch as close as possible to the uh, reuse yeah that's a very good point because uh, as you all that's know correct. fiber does not interfere with electricity uh, so you want to push the fiber as deep as possible in the network yeah. Uh, and you want to minimize the CAT6, uh, which is an electrical interface and is susceptible to uh, uh, other kinds of uh, interference. So that's a very good point, Carl Uwe. Deep fiber uh, into the network, push it as far in the network as possible, minimize the CAT6 uh, distances to eliminate any disturbances that comes from the uh, elements, whether it's electrical interference or uh, lightning or uh, any of that. Uh, I don't see any more questions. I thank you, Amjad, so much for sharing your experience. Carl Uwe, always good to have you. It's not only a pleasure, but it's uh, like an insurance policy that we have the expert uh, behind us when we're speaking and we can refer to you with the difficult uh, questions. Uh, thanks, Javad. You make a good job. And thanks to all the customers. Thank, here all thank you, Javad, and thanks for all. Yeah. And uh, to conclude this, uh, I would like to uh, thank everybody for your attendance. We really appreciate that you give us your time and you give us your attendance. Uh, amazing attendance uh, today. So many people have came in from so many countries, so many different partners. Uh, we would like to know more about you. Please contact us. Give us your contact details. Let's have another one-to-one -one session on how we can cooperate. Uh, use a reply again. Reply to the email, invitation email. That is Amjad's email. The, all the invitations went uh, from Amjad email. So contact Amjad, or you can contact us through the contact forms that are on the website. We will have a recorded session. Uh, <coughs> sorry, we will have a recorded. 
uh, version of this session. If you want to have the recording, please also contact us and we'll send you a, record, a recording. Uh, last uh, and before I conclude, I need uh, to beg you, please, <laughs> for a favor that we're going to send out this afternoon as soon as possible the evaluation forms. Help us with the evaluation forms. Put in the comments. We want to be better. We want to listen to you. And if you have any business requirements, you can either put it in that uh, form or contact us directly. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And as we say in Tawasul, together we are stronger. So let's go together to the market. Uh, we have a complementary solution to what you're offering. And let's win projects together. Stay safe. Take care of your families in this difficult time and hope to meet with you very soon. Thank you. All right, meeting is offline, Carl, Uwe and Amjad. Thank you so much. This went very well. Yeah. It was, uh, I think, 30 something, 40 something because people were coming in and out. So the number was changing. So it's, uh, I think, almost the same uh, ratio that uh, half of the people that register uh, show up. So uh, that is good. But what's, uh, I'm, I'm so happy that 